am so excited for this coming winter rains because a few weeks ago here at the Olson homestead we installed an 11,000 gallon roof water catchment system. 11,000 gallons seems like a ton of water, but it's not even all the water that's coming off the roof of my house. My house is around 1,500 square feet, and one inch of rain over 1,000 square feet equals about 635 gallons of water. So even in a drought year, like last year, where we had 25 inches of rain, there was still tens of thousands of gallons of water coming off the roof of this house right here. And so storage is the biggest hurdle and the biggest obstacle, and we'll talk a little bit about the storage tanks in just a little bit. But first I wanna talk a little bit about how we get the water off the roof of the house and into our conveyance systems. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that your gutters are clean before the first rain, because if they're filled with leaves and other debris and it starts to rain, that water is going to wash over your gutter potentially if the water can't get through the gutter and down into the pipe and that can lead to a whole host of issues so clean your gutters second thing is even after you clean your gutters there's still going to be leaves and other debris that will still find its way into your pipe so you always want to have some sort of a leaf screen or a leaf catch that protects your conveyance pipe the pipe that's taking the water to your tank so that debris doesn't get into that pipe so here's the leaf screen here is my roof line, and right here is where the water is coming out of the gutter, coming through the first pipe into the leaf screen, and then there's my conveyance line that takes it out to the tanks. So once you know you've got clean gutters, you have a leaf screen in place, now let's talk about conveyance. There's two different kinds of water conveyance. There's dry line conveyance and wet line conveyance. Now a dry line conveyance system would usually work out well if you had a tank right next to the house. Then water could come off the roof of your building, through a pipe, and just enter right into your tank. So that means that once the storm has gone and there's no more water coming off the roof, that that pipe is empty of water. But a wet line conveyance is very different. A wet line conveyance means that water comes off the roof of your house, through your pipe, through your leaf screen, and into your wet line conveyance pipe. Now water has this incredible quality in that it finds its own level. So that means that water could actually go into this pipe. This pipe can go down into the ground and through a trench, which the pipe is trenched right here, and out to the tank. And as long as the top of the tank is below this point right here, right below the leaf catch, and as long as this is a water sealed pipe, water can actually go down the pipe, through from under the ground, and come back up and into the tank. And as long as that point where it goes into the tank is below this point, the water will get there. So often, one of the important aspects of putting in a roof catchment system is locating your tank. So as it might be nice to place a tank right next to the house and use a dry line conveyance system, it's generally best to try to place tanks high up in the landscape. And locating tanks can be tricky business depending on how much land you have and the different uses on your land. So the, one of the issues with a wet line conveyance system is that after the storm has passed, water sits in this pipe, right? Because it just sits in there. There's no way to get it out. So it's always advised to put a drain down at the low point, which in this case is right here in this pathway. And so then in between storms, you can open that drain up and drain all the water in this wet line system. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna check out the drain valve for this wet line conveyance system. Now remember, we're using water to find its own level to get water from the roof to our first tank. So that means water is going to sit there in the low part of the pipe, in the low point. We want to be able to get that water out in case it gets kind of nasty over time and we don't want that water to find its way into our tank. So here we have a valve box that's protecting the valve. If you're somewhere where there might be tractors or trucks driving around, you might want to use a concrete box so it doesn't get run over and broken. So let's look inside here. So inside we find a gate valve. That allows us to empty this, uh, to turn it on and control the flow. And let's check out and see if there's any water left out, left in here from the last storm. Oh yeah, that's some water there spraying all over me here. So 
we know that drain is working. We know that there's water in that pipe and this next storm is going to be pushing that into the tank or we could drain the pipe now and, uh, and fill this pipe back up uh, at the beginning of the next storm. But this is how we can get that water out of the pipe and make sure that we have clean water going into our tank. Okay, so here we are at the first tank. Now the reason why we're checking out this tank, this is our 1,000 gallon tank, and it's what we call a transfer tank. See, we weren't able to get the water from the roof of the house to the place where we want to store most of that water. Sometimes, in many cases, the place where you want to place tanks or other storage systems is farther up in the landscape where you can use gravity to get the water out of the tanks once they're full, and often that's farther up the landscape than you can get by just using gravity off the roof of the building and water finding its own level and getting into your tank. So what we've done here is we've used this transfer tank. Now the water is passively getting into this tank off the roof of the house. So it's going through that wet line conveyance and it's coming up this pipe and entering the top of the tank. So what that means is that this pipe and the top of this tank is actually below that leaf catcher that we were looking at earlier. So that's how the water is able to get in without using any electricity. So once the water fills up this 1,000 gallon tank, we have a pretty interesting system. We do have a pump with a sensor. Uh, you can see this, these electrical connections right here. So there's a pump inside this tank. So when this tank fills up, there's a sensor that kicks on. It tells the pump to pump water from this tank over to our two 5,000 gallon tanks where we're storing the majority of our caught water higher in the landscape. Again, the reason for that is because our best storage options were in a location where we have to pump the water to. So here we are at the first 5,000 gallon tank. Now there's two of these tanks. There's one right behind this one. Now these tanks are connected via a two inch pipe, flexible pipe, that's actually connecting them from the bottom. So what that means is that as the water starts filling up these tanks, both the two tanks will fill up equally, allowing us to uh, have an even distribution of water within both of these tanks. Now remember, we're pulling the water from that 1,000 gallon transfer tank. So the water goes from the roof of our house, goes through the leaf catch, into our wet line conveyance. It enters our 1,000 gallon tank with the pump and the sensor. As that tank fills, the pump turns on and it starts filling our two 5,000 gallon tanks. Here you can see the inflow, and right here, this is, this is a nifty little gauge that as the water level fills, this, this gauge will start filling as well, will start uh, lifting up as well, and that will give us a sense of our water level. We have an outflow at the bottom in case you need to get the water out for any number of reasons. Now our main connection to get water out of these tanks is actually on the second tank. So anytime we open up one tank, we're actually going to drain both of the tanks. Now we do have a way of putting a valve right in between our two 5,000 gallon tanks so we can segregate the two and drain one and keep one full just in case of some sort of unforeseen emergency. But what's going to be happening with this system is these two 5,000 gallon tanks are actually going to feed a pond that's yet to be built. So next year, we'll be putting a 30,000 gallon pond on site just down slope from these tanks. And what that's going to allow us to do is keep the pond full in the summertime using rainwater. That's one thing. But the other thing is, is that the pond will turn into a biologically alive a uh, habitat system where there's fish and all kinds of microorganisms living there in the water and as well as attracting uh, dragonflies and birds and all kinds of other things. Now though all those organisms will help manage our garden and our homestead here. But the other function is that we're placing our pond upslope from our whole edible forest garden. We have about an acre of forest garden here and we want to be able to irrigate our forest garden using rainwater. So the way we're devising it though is that we're going to use a flood irrigation system where we'll be able to drain water out of our pond because that water will be filled with fish poop and beneficial microorganisms and all kinds of nutrients. And so when we 
drain our pond down to irrigate our edible forest garden, we'll actually be fertilizing it at the same time. And as that pond level drops, these rain tanks will kick on and fill that pond back up. So we're taking water from the sky, off the roof of our building, putting it into storage tanks, using that rainwater and turning it into fertility water in our pond, and then using that high fertility rich water and actually fertigating, irrigating and fertilizing our edible forest garden. Now, just remember that even in drought conditions, you can catch an enormous amount of water off of any kind of building or structure. In fact, one inch of rain on one acre is approximately 27,000 gallons of water. So even in a drought year, you have an immense amount of water falling out of the sky. And unless you have the budget and the space, it's unlikely that you'll be able to catch and store all the water coming off of the roof of your house and various structures. So the other aspect of being able to catch water is actually just allowing it to infiltrate into the ground to use terraces, rain gardens, contour ditches, and ponds and all kinds of other structures and techniques to help turn your landscape into a water harvesting collection system. And the more that we can do that and keep all of the water on site, the healthier our watersheds will be, the less dependent on irrigation will be, we won't be pulling water out of the aquifer, we won't be pulling water out of our rivers, lakes, and streams, and we'll be able to grow an abundance of food and medicine for our communities just from the rain. Just know that learning about a few tips here on the video is not enough to get you on your way. There's a lot of really great resources out there, great books, great classes and programs. We have programs at the Permaculture Skills Center that teach you about rainwater harvesting. Um, but in some cases, you also may want to actually hire a professional who can help you design and engineer these kinds of systems. Our contracting company, Permaculture Artisans, designs and installs systems like these. And wherever you are, there's likely somebody there who can help you. So don't be afraid to ask for some professional advice. At least get a consultation so that you make sure that you install these systems right. Thank you very much. I'm Eric Olson with the Permaculture Skill Center and Permaculture Artisans. 